Hi everyone, this is Elena of The Witch's Box, and I'm here today with another episode of Witch Book 2. And today's book is this book. It's a great book. It's called The Great Work by Tiffany Lasik. This book went out for our December, am I right? Yeah, our December 2020 Witch's Book uh, subscription. And it went out with another book that I'm going to be speaking about separately because they are different in topic. There's an interplay between the books, even though they seem on the surface to be different. In any case, I'm still going to do a review of the other books separately. This book deserves its own video because honestly, um, there's just so much to say about this book. I'm going to read to you the bio and then we're going to get into the book and talk about all the things. Okay. Tiffany Lasik is a spiritual psychotherapist with over 16 years of experience in individual couples and group therapy. As the owner of the Hive and Grove Center for Holistic Wellness, she created and teaches two self-development programs, Patterns of Conscious Living and Spiritual Language of the Divine. She also teaches the Spiritual Directorship and Divine Connections training programs at the Transformational Arts College of Spiritual and Holistic Training. An international presenter and keynote speaker, Tiffany has conducted workshops for many conferences and organizations. You can visit her online at www.hiveandgrove.ca. So let me give you a little bit of background. I don't even remember exactly why the topic for this book came up for December. I know that I wanted to go into some dream work and that's the topic of the other book that I'll discuss in a different video. And because it was December, because we were entering a whole new year, the wheel of the year and, and, and talking and reading about the wheel of the year came up. But none of the books, and there are really, there are quite a few books out there that talk about the Wheel of the Year from different perspectives that are really good. They're good, but they all seem to cover the same. And if there are any variations, there are variations maybe in mythology, in story, in the metaphors. But for the most part, we all kind of know the Wheel of the Year. Most beginner books or more, most books that are not beginner but cover a broad general topic of witchcraft will give you at least one or two chapters discussing the Wheel of the Year. It's not a mystery to us for the most part. Even if we live in environments where the Wheel of the Year doesn't quite fit with our experience of our seasonal changes in our geographical location. And it approached the topic in such a unique way, but also in such a profoundly deep, detailed way that, that speaks and deals directly with our internal transformational process, that it was like, holy shit, this is an amazing book. It's a way of looking and working with the Wheel of Year that I have never seen before. Tiffany Lasik did a gorgeous job in um, and I think that I asked her this question when we did our live in December. I don't quite remember what my res or her response was, but I mean, like, it feels like she just downloaded a whole system, which was phenomenal. She's layered in so many things into this book that I can't even imagine. I know that I asked her something regarding this. And again, I'm sorry, I don't remember the, the, the answer or the exact question, but it was like, how did you pull all this together and layer it and weave it together in such a gorgeous way? I still don't know, even though she answered me, because it was like, I still can't quite fathom someone pulling together so much information in a way that is impactful, potent. I feel like this is a book that you can journey through each and every year and get something out of. I'm going to go, let me just, you know how I do. I get excited and I just start talking and I get ahead of myself. Let me read you the table of contents. Let's talk about what the great work is and how it relates to the wheel of the year and what her proposal is in terms of how to work with the wheel of the year, which you guys, I, I can't. So really quickly, the subtitle to the book is Self-Knowledge and Healing Through the Wheel of the Year. I'm going to read to you the um, table of contents. Some of it's going to make sense, some of it won't, and then we'll talk about We'll talk about all the things. We'll talk about all the things and why you need to get this book. This book will give you 13 chapters, 13 sections, and within those sections there's a weekly section of uh, work and questions and exercises to go through so that it will literally take you through all 52 weeks of the year, including in that where it sits, where that particular week sits on the wheel of the year, weaving in what that season is and all these things. Okay. So what I'm reading to you is basically each cycle will be a month. And within that cycle, you've got all sorts of amazing exercises and readings and teachings and things. Okay. 
So part one, which is cycle one, December 21st through January 31st is about roots and foundation. Also, again, it's in the it's in the beginning of winter. So mythologies and elemental reflections on that season are part of this month. You will have section one is mythological reflections on the birth of the wonder child. Elemental reflection on earth and active reflection on breathing. Psychological reflection on family of origin, developmental reflection on birth through three years of age, because you get these two graphs. It's so hard to explain on video, but she's layered in here, Western and Eastern philosophies and techniques for personal development, as well as developmental stages through age and psychology to each of these seasons. You're getting layer upon layer upon layer of psychology, of Eastern philosophy, of Western mysticism and philosophy in different ways on self-awareness, self-knowledge, and self-healing. So it becomes really challenging for me to actually explain to you all of what each of these chapters encompasses, but you're getting a, a, a gorgeous tapestry of all these different philosophies woven together in a way that is, felt incredibly intuitive and very like, yeah, of course. So when I read you these chapter titles, you can see it already in the first month where we're dealing with family of origin, developmental reflections, right? So you're going to go deep. This is deep internal psychological spiritual work. Also part of the first month, alchemical reflection on calcination. She defines these things. Energetic reflection on the root chakra. Guidance reflection on animal guides and intuitive reflection on runes. This is just in the first month of winter. Part two is cycle two, February 1st through March 14th. This is about gifts from the inner child, mythological reflection on purification through light, elemental reflection on water, and active reflection on drumming, developmental reflection on preschool age and psychological reflection on feelings, alchemical reflection on dissolution, energetic reflection on the sacral chakra, guidance reflection on aquatic guides, and intuitive reflection on tassiomancy. This is the second month. Part three, process phase one, um, March 15th through 21st. So this is a process phase. The waxing moon is part of the phase. And it talks about waxing phase of innocence and opening. Part four is cycle three, which is March 22nd through May 2nd, nurturing empowerment and self-esteem. Um, mythological reflection on celebration of life, elemental reflection on air, and active reflections on singing and chanting. Developmental reflection on school age and psychological reflection on empowerment and self-esteem. Alchemical reflection on separation. Energetic reflection on the solar plexus chakra. Guidance reflection on bird guides and intuitive reflection on oracles. I mean, there's a lot here. We're literally only on cycle four. I'm going to keep going. Part five, which, part five, which is cycle four, is May 3rd through June 13th, and it focuses on union and partnerships, um, reflection on the synthesis of spirit and matter, elemental reflections on fire, and active reflection on dancing, a developmental reflection on adolescence and psychological reflection on relationships, a chemical reflection on conjunction, energetic reflection on the heart chakra, Guidance reflection on the we guides and intuitive reflection on the ogum. There's so much here. Again, I'm only halfway through. Stick with me because it's worth it. Part six, which is the process phase two. There are process phases in different sections of the year that she has, and this is for the full moon. The full moon phase of fullness and fruition. Part seven, which is cycle five, is June 21st through August 1st, and it's about shining our truth and creativity. Mythological reflection on celebration of effort. Elemental reflection on ether and active reflection on journaling. Developmental reflection on early adulthood and psychological reflection on voice and choice. Alchemical reflection on fermentation. Energetic reflection on throat chakra. Guidance reflection on elementals and intuitive reflection of the tarot. Cycle six is August 2nd through September 12th, which is visioning yourself. Reflections on reaping first harvest. Energetic reflection on light and active reflection on visual arts. Developmental reflection on adulthood and psychological reflection on beliefs and discernment. So important. Um, alchemical reflection on distillation. Energetic reflection on the brow chakra. Guidance reflection on mythological beasts. And intuitive reflection on the I Ching. Process phase three is September 13th through the 19th. And it's about the waning moon. Waning phase of experience and community because now we're going into the end of the year, the dying away phase. Cycle seven is September 20th through October 31st, and it's on the effects of gratitude on life purpose. 
mythological reflections on Thanksgiving, energetic reflection on thought and active reflection on yoga, developmental reflection on elderhood and psychological reflection on higher purpose, alchemical reflection on coagulation, energetic reflection on the crown chakra, guidance reflection on angels and intuitive reflection on scrying. Cycle eight is November 1st through December 12th, healing from loss. Mythological reflection on entering the mystery, elemental reflection on energy and active reflection on Heine. Heine is a system that she's created. I probably will not go into that, but it is interspersed throughout the book. Developmental reflection on Bardo and psychological reflection on the holographic universe. Alchemical reflection on return, reflection on the soul star chakra, guidance reflection on spirit guides and intuitive reflection on channeling. Part 12 is another process phase, which is December 13th through the 19th. It's a dark moon phase of rest and respite. And then part 13, which is December 20th, is a pause and integration. This is where the self-actualization survey is. This is amazing. Here's the thing about the system that she created, and this is part of the appendix. She lists here a list of emotional and psychological issues and their prescriptions because what she's posing in here is that if you have certain issues that you really want to work through, there are certain seasonal phases that you can go to as a prescriptive to work through that work to address the issues that you're dealing with. You don't necessarily have to be living in that, let's say, winter phase to do the work of the winter space or the winter chapters in order to address the psychological or emotional or spiritual issues that you're dealing with at the time. So there's a list of those things. And I'm going to read to you what some of those things are so that you have an example. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I think that this is a phenomenal undertaking. I can't wait to see what else she does. So this is an appendix where if you look through it, you can look to see if there's anything that you're dealing with and see what the prescriptions are. So addictions and disorders like eating disorders, fanaticism, gambling, internet gaming addiction, love addiction, sex addiction, smoking, substance addictions and workaholism, attachment issues around boundaries, inability to establish with others, inability to establish psychic boundaries, burnout, chaos. This is like a, a main umbrella for a couple of other things discomfort with the natural chaos of life, inability to live in the moment, living a life of chaos, a depleted belief in the efficacy of choices, feeling not in control of your own choices, overwhelmed by choice of direction, excessive need to communicate, sense that what you say doesn't matter, creativity that's repressed, defensiveness, the need to control or the need to deny, denial of mystical and transcendent, lying, spiritual bypassing, excessive or extreme reactions, emotionally, inability to identify your emotions, overwhelmed by emotions, repressed emotions, anger, anxiety, bitterness, compassion, curiosity, depression, discarded, feelings of being discarded, emptiness, fear, fear around new direction in life, fear of abandonment, fear of death, fear of success, fear of taking risks, inability to forgive, grief, guilt, impatience, lack of joy, panic attacks, passion. There is like, I, I can go on and on for pages. So the idea is that if you have issues with some of these things, you can go there. It'll tell you which season, which phase to go to, to do those, that, those prescriptive works in that section in order to address those issues for yourself. It is all very self-referenced, self-resourced in terms of the answers are within us. And there are particular exercises that help you excavate those answers and that transformation for yourself in this book. Again, over the map of the Wheel of the Year, along with the map of psychological development, along with the map of Eastern philosophy, along with the map of Western mysticism. <laughs> There's so much in this book. It is a huge undertaking to read this book all through in one shot. I don't think that I recommend it that way when I did. <laughs> I did do it that way because I wanted to know if this is a book that I really wanted to choose for the book subscription. However, most of the people, if I'm not mistaken, this is probably different now only because it's been a few months that people have this book in their hands. I feel confident in saying that most of the readers who received this book from our subscription just dove in into the part of the book that we were at seasonally, which was at the time, at the end of the book. You can do it that way. I do recommend that you read, if you're going to do it that way, um, read the first introduction and like establishing chapters in the beginning that kind of explain to you what the system is and how to use it and then just skip it all and go right to the season or the time of the year that you're at and start working. I, holy cow, Tiffany LASIK, I'm just saying, it's just, it's really, again, you know, you know that I'm all about 
psychology. I'm all about internal psychological and emotional healing. I'm all about that as a foundation for your powerful witchcraft path. This, this, I mean, this is some deep, serious work that really helps you excavate who you are, help you heal and integrate parts of yourself that need it, and teach you a great deal about magic and being a witch along the way, in a way that isn't obvious or overt, but still incredibly effective. Boom. Also, can we talk? Look at this. It's a beautiful cover. The design here is gorgeous. I really, I, yeah, I, I'm remiss in the fact that it took me so long to talk about this, but you know, I just... We just roll with things here at the Witch's Box when we can. Here is a review. I really would love for all of you to get this book and do this work. I think that it is a great service to everyone. I know at the time that we spoke, she said that she was right, working on something else. I have no idea what it is, but I can't wait to see whatever she's creating because honestly, what? I don't even know. I feel like a book like this would take about 10 years to put together. I am just so mm, mm, impressed. There you go. There you go. All the information on this book and the writer will be down below. And anything else you need to see is all linked down below as well. I will see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye.